Hey guys, Rollout here, and welcome back to Builder's Block. This week we've got another attempt at a Transformer, a couple of fun experiments, and we're gonna try something a little different at the end, so let me know what you think. If you like what we do here, you can help support the show on Patreon, I post daily updates, there's a Discord server, and I'm offering my creations for sale over there, so go check it out. You can also support the show by liking and sharing this video. Without further ado, let's get started. So I started off the week with another Transformer concept, and this is the culmination of a few of my wants. I'd like to build another Fembot, I'd like to build another bird, and I'd like to build a purple Transformer. So I attempted to tackle all three of those wants all at once, and this is sort of what I came up with. What I really wanted to do is turn these wing elements into some kind of hair piece. But conceptually, that's very difficult to accomplish because it means you need to turn the entire wingspan of a bird into the head of a robot. And there aren't too many ways you can do that. I tried doing it by attaching the wings to these armatures that then fold up into the head, becoming the hair at the back. And this is extremely flawed because not only do you have these big, ugly armatures on the side of the body, but the head doesn't move at all and ultimately the whole thing just doesn't look very good. So I think if I tackle this concept in the future, I'm going to have to approach it completely differently. I also tried to make some brick-built wings so that I could maybe turn the wings into some kind of garment, either a, a dress or maybe like a poncho, but if I decide to go that route, I think I am going to avoid using ball joints because I hate how much gray it forces into the color scheme. So, no dice on this Transformer, but uh, at least I gave it a shot. On the next day, I got the final sticker sheet that I needed to complete Die Mariner. I also got all the pieces I needed to finish Die Dragon, so he is all properly colored as well. Which means I finally have all of the Dayusha Dimensional Robos together at last. Just in time for these cards to have been released on the mobile game, actually. I'm finally able to play my favorite deck on Vanguard Zero, and that makes me very happy. But that aside, I do feel like this group is a little incomplete without a singular robot to display next to them. Originally, the plan was that I would build a Dayusha using elements from all of these models, but I'm starting to think that would be a little bit misleading. It would lead people to believe that these actually combine when in fact they don't. So I think I kind of want to subvert that by building a great Dayusha instead, which in a weird way would probably be more accurate to the show, because the combination sequence in the show makes no sense. These units are supposed to form the normal Dayusha, that much is extremely clear, but in the show, all of these units sort of fly together, and the incomprehensible result is Great Dayusha for some reason. So, building a Great Dayusha would be both less misleading, but also, as I said, more accurate to the show in a weird roundabout way. Now, Great Dayusha would probably be one of the largest humanoid things I've ever built. It would be quite the challenge, but I would love to give it a try. Maybe not soon, but at some point in the future. Up next, I built a pretty simple tank using the Monkey Kid staff element as the barrel of the cannon, uh, and that works pretty well, but otherwise, there's not a whole lot of interesting things going on here. I guess the shaping of the treads is kind of cool. It uses all of those rounded elements linked together, which creates a nice shape, but uh, yeah, everything else is pretty simple. It does use those robot claws as... I guess a cow catcher? I don't know what you call that on a tank, but yeah, it's a pretty simple build overall. Now on the next day, 
I thought about attempting to build something I have planned on building for a while. Uh, ever since I built Blue Eyes, I wanted to build some more dual monsters from Yu-Gi-Oh! And the obvious one, obviously because I already have Blue Eyes and Kaiba built, would be an XYZ Dragon Cannon. It's, it's a robot, it combines, it transforms, it seems right up my alley. I've been planning on building one for a long time. But as I started to put pieces together... I don't know, man. I just sort of lost interest, I guess. It's not that anything I put together was bad. I think all of this is acceptable. I just... I don't know. This is as far as I got. I built a head, I built the, the lower body, and I built an arm before I just lost interest. I just don't really care about having this in my collection anymore. Maybe that'll change in the future, but uh, right now I just don't feel like building something uh, that I don't want to build. And that seems like an obvious concept, but uh, it bums me out a little bit because at one point I was very excited about this and I'm just not anymore. But oh well. Things change, we live, we learn. I also built the long range buster cannon for the Shadow Fox entirely in light gray before I was forced to use some dark gray because I was missing one of these cones in the middle. But technically this is more accurate to the show despite the fact that I kind of liked the contrast before. I just wanted to see what this looked like and uh, here it is. I also built another viral creation, just a, a thing I saw on the internet that I thought looked cool. This is a Relo triangle, it's like a, a mathematical shape that can actually roll like a wheel. All of its dimensions are just so, so that it actually works like a bearing and rolls completely smoothly despite its triangular shape, and it's really fun to play with. Uh, the dimensions of this Lego model in particular are, are really, really well done, and if nothing else, it's just a great example of some really important Lego geometry concerning these slopes and brackets and things like that. So this was a nice refresher, and again, the entire Lego model is just a really fun thing to play around with, a nice little fidget toy that you can roll around. Up next is something a little different. I am setting a precedent where if I happen to purchase a Lego set and build it, that is going to count as my builder's block build for the day because after I've built an entire official Lego set, most of the time I just do not feel like building something of my own. And on days where this happens on builder's block, uh, I'm going to do a little review on the set during the episode. So let's take a look at the Monkey Kid, Monkey King, Warrior Mech. So when I first saw the Monkey Kid line of sets, I wasn't sure how to feel about it because they all looked super, super cool, but they were a little expensive. And if I learned anything from Ninjago, it's like, there are a ton of sets with some great parts usage that look amazing, but I know a lot of people love the Ninjago TV show. It really wasn't for me, and without some kind of emotional investment in a piece of media, I just couldn't justify the price tag on a lot of those sets. And that's kind of how I was feeling about the Monkey Kid sets, to be honest with you. And then I watched the pilot of the Monkey Kid TV show, and I absolutely fell in love with it. The art style and the action direction and just visually this show is incredible. If you have not seen it, go check it out because it is actively going to burn a hole in my wallet, I think. And I started with, of course, the centerpiece of the line. This is kind of the flagship set. Uh, 
and uh, I was really excited for this. And to be honest, I'm I'm slightly disappointed by it, and and I'll I'll go into that. But first and foremost, like look at this thing. It it looks incredible. So for starters. Articulation is a little bit limited, and this is to be expected on something this absolutely massive, because solidity comes first. You'd think, and, and I'll talk about that here in just a second, but I find that the lack of articulation in the arms paired with how absolutely massive the Monkey King staff that comes with this is, like it uses a gigantic Technic axle in the middle of it, and I just, I feel like it should be a little bit smaller because the articulation in the arms is so limited and you have to put his arms so far apart to hold on to this big old stick that like it just limits things even more and it always looks awkward. Like I really have not found a good way uh, to display him holding this staff in two hands in a way that looks super natural. Like this is fine, but I, I wish I could do more. I also wish I could have him hold the staff in the middle like I had in that first picture, but I was obviously just like propping it up and uh, and having him hold it in the middle, just like with with hope and, and luck. Uh, but there isn't really a, a good way to have him hold it in the middle unless you shrink the staff down to its smaller form. And, and that's slightly disappointing, especially since this mech is, is so dynamic in those first two episodes of the show. It's doing all these crazy, you know, brave style action poses. I'm almost certain that, you know, it, it it's doing a Gurren Lagan reference with like the crossed arms pose it does. And you can't really pull any of that off. But I tried. I tried my hardest to make him cross his arms no matter the cost, no matter how much I had to cheat to get it done. And uh, unfortunately, it just isn't possible. The closest I got, though, was having him do a Pacific Rim fist catch pose like this. Uh, and it's it's good enough. Like, this is a pretty good way to to display him. But you do need to, like, disconnect the joints in the elbows that you can rotate them. And eh, it's kind of a mess. It's a little fiddly, but it can be done, and uh, it's pretty cool. Now, something I didn't notice until I was actually putting this set together is that the feet are designed to look like sneakers. And if you watched the first episode, uh, the show seems to have a little bit of an obsession with sneakers. Like, it's appealing to to, you know, young sneaker heads out there, which is, which is fine. And this is a fun little design, so I don't mind it. But I do want to take this moment to talk about just how absolutely awful the ankle design on this set is. Lego puts a lot of effort into making sure these gigantic mechs they build are, are very solid, especially in the knees. The knees is a point of concern for Lego, and they put a lot of thought into making sure they cannot move at all so that the mech just doesn't fall over. And, and I appreciate that on some level. I understand why something this big can't be super articulate in the hips or the knees, but then they proceed to just like design the ankles in such an awful way that barely supports the weight of the entire model. There is an, an ankle pivot in this set that is just connected by two Technic pins and it's super loose, it's super fiddly, the forward and back movement on the ankle is just like a Technic ratchet, a single Technic ratchet, and if you put him in any pose more dynamic than just one or two clicks forward and back at the hip, you're gonna have such a hard time keeping him upright and and even then he might fall over because of how poorly these ankles are designed and that's probably the biggest downside of the entire set is how these ankles are designed that that was super disappointing he also has this cape at the back here which which looks really cool and it is a cool piece and and everything and obviously they did this because the the monkey king minifigure has a cape very similar to this so they wanted the big old mech to have it but i almost feel like this cape is a little bit 
too much of a good thing because there's so much going on on this mech design. It has like little lanterns hanging off of it. It has the skirt armor. It has the flags. It has the ribbons on the head. I feel like it didn't need this cape and and it's got it anyway. And it just it kind of gets in the way despite the fact that it looks awesome. I suppose you can't pull off too many dynamic things with this model anyway, so it's not that much of a problem, but I question whether this element of the design was ultimately necessary. The cockpit does open, and, and I found it kind of interesting that MK doesn't really peg in anywhere in the cockpit, despite the fact that there are a bunch of studs inside that you would think you plug his legs into. In fact, he's supposed to rest on, on tiles, and then you secure him in using the controls, which are like, uh, zip line elements there's really cool parts usage in this set but those just kind of hold him in and it, it's a little bit loose and fiddly and it's just it's I, I thought it was strange it's it's not bad and it, it does make it easy to pull him out of the cockpit you just fold the controls down and drop him out so that's nice um also there's like five stickers inside the cockpit and you can barely see any of them so what's the point you know like that's just a little detail for the person building this set because like good luck seeing those stickers inside once you have it built like with or without a minifigure inside speaking of which i mean there are a ton of stickers in this set also the skirt armor and the flags come like on a sprue it's like it's like a foil thin piece of plastic that you pop those out of uh, kind of cool but it, like it kind of made the building this set feel almost like a model kit uh, between that and the stickers you got two large instruction booklets one for the mech itself and one for all of the ancillary things that come with this set as well uh, you also get a teal brick separator which is appreciated considering i have so many orange brick separators it's nice to have more of the alternate color but i do find it peculiar because i thought the reason they came out with the teal brick separator is because they were producing so many sets that have orange in their color schemes and they want the brick separator to be a, a different color than any of the pieces in the set so that it doesn't get lost in the pile of bricks right but like there's a lot lot of teal in this set there's not a single piece of orange in this set at all so you would think they'd include the orange brick separator but that is like the most nitpicky thing i have said in this video so far so let's just fly past it here are all of the other things you get in the set you get like the noodle shop and some customers you get uh some demon bull king army guys uh and then you get the monkey king along with the peach tree and his nimbus this is all very cool it's all very well built but uh again there are a ton of stickers on this thing and it's a shame because like I don't know if I want to keep all of this together it seems a little unnecessary to me I think I and most people just like bought this set for the mech and all of this almost feels a little like price inflation and, and I don't know how I feel about that but I guess they like they wanted the peach tree and they wanted the noodle shop like in a set because they are like kind of important moments in the show and they didn't have any other set to put it in and they didn't feel like it would sell on its own so they threw it in here I get that and it is the reason why this set has such good value I mean it's like $150 for like 1600 pieces which is pretty good value in my opinion um it just seems like it would be a bit of a waste for me to take this apart because it has so many stickers on it and i would just have to pull off all of the stickers and and throw those away and like ugh, that that feels even worse uh than leaving this thing together that sign at the top by the way is a six by six sticker no stop it don't do that, Lego. It's so easy to get air bubbles trapped in that. That Whose idea was that? Uh, but, you know, it is a fun build. It looks really nice. Uh, I probably will end up keeping it together just because I'm a completionist. But, uh, yeah, I, I would have preferred just the mech alone, I think.
I also think this set is like meant to be paired with the big demon bull king himself because otherwise the play pattern doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I guess the, the demon bull army is attacking the noodle shop and MK has to go get the staff and come back and save the day. But then what? He just turns into the big monkey king mech and kicks a bull mech out of the way like it it seems so one-sided and unless you have the demon king himself for the mech to fight as well it's downright unfair uh long story short i think this set looks amazing and and the visual design of it is just assaulting in the best way but know that it's kind of all for show, and unfortunately, there are a lot of really big issues under the surface. Uh, if you are a huge fan of Monkey Kid already, this is probably something you need in your collection. I think that all of the cool things about it make it worth it. Uh, but otherwise, it is, is very expensive, and if you're expecting to be able to, like, pose this in any way beyond just standing there up on the shelf looking cool, you're probably going to be disappointed. So once again, let me know what you thought of this kind of casual slideshow set review sort of thing. Fans of rollout reviews are probably either going to love hearing my opinion again, or resent the fact that I didn't post it as a video on my second channel. Side note, here's a little secret for all of you who made it to the end of this video. Takara Tomy is about to reveal a spiritual successor to beat him on. So, like, I might be posting on that channel again sooner than later. Just saying. Anyway, special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, Valraven, Beyond the Brick, Beta, and the rest. Until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off.